There are some important similarities between making a one-legged man jump and a two-legged man walk. Let's construct our man again by clicking draw and setting these two smoothing controls. Press D to begin drawing your circle, leaving a small gap at the top of the circle. Click here to adjust the fill color of the circle and increase the opacity to 1. Hold down the D key and press Tab to enter Edit Points mode, then press A to select all points and tone down their appearance. From the Edit Strokes drop-down, press Toggle Cyclic. This makes the stroke continuous across the gap. Press A to deselect all points, then press C to select just these points. Then click Subdivide, producing more points in this area. Hold down the D and E keys for the Sculpting menu and select Smooth. Then, from the same menu, select the Push tool. Press F to adjust the brush size, then adjust the circle's shape. Zooming the view out has the effect of making the brush larger. Hold down the Shift and Middle Mouse button to pan your view. Then press D to draw the leg. If you make a mistake, just press Ctrl-Z or Command-Z on your Mac to undo that. Because of Grease Pencil's excellent smoothing tools, having a shaky hand is no problem. Press and hold the E key to use the already selected push tool. Press A to select all points, then place the middle mouse cursor here and scale using S. Then use G to grab and move the whole leg here. Press A to deselect all points. Press the C key to make a partial selection around the knee and the ankle and the toes, where we'll add more points with subdivide. Press A to deselect all points, then C to select from this point upward. Then place the right mouse cursor here and rotate the leg. Hold down the Alt key and use your scroll wheel to advance 10 more frames. Then use the C key to select these again, rotating the leg into the vertical position. Select all points from the ankle upward, place the middle mouse button, and then scale, immediately pressing the middle mouse button when in the vertical direction. Use the Smooth tool to even out the area around the knee. Hold down the Alt key and use your scroll wheel to scroll back and forth through these two frames. Position the time slider at frame 18. Press A to select all points, then G to set a keyframe. On frame 1, select one leg point, then press L to select linked, then copy the leg to the clipboard. Position the time slider on frame 18, then select the first frame and press Shift D to duplicate it and place it on frame 18. Enable the onion skins and then set both fields to a large number. Press C and select the points from the knee up. Then position the right mouse cursor at the knee joint and press R to rotate the leg like this. Press C again and select all of these points to the knee. Then position the mouse and rotate like this. Press A to deselect all points. Then C to select these points and rotate this back a little like this. Press E to use the Smooth tool to even out the points around the ankle and the knee. Hold down Alt and use the scroll wheel to go back and forth through the frames. Place the time slider between the first two keyframes and then use Ctrl E, moving the mouse to establish an in-between frame. Hold down the D and E keys to select the push tool and from a great distance adjust the entire leg like this. Use your middle mouse button and the scroll wheel to move your frames and zoom in on them like this. Then use Ctrl E again to establish another in-between frame, pressing E to use the push tool to adjust the in-between. Hold down Alt and the scroll wheel to move through the frames of your animation so far. Select keyframe 1, then select a point on the leg, press L to select link, copy and pasting this frame on frame 18. Then press G to grab and move it into place like this. Select a single point on the leg, then press L, and then from this menu, arrange the strokes and send it all the way to the back. Select just the front leg, copy it to the clipboard, then on frame 1, paste it in place. Press G to grab and move it, holding down the middle mouse button to maintain a horizontal position. Move this leg all the way to the back. At the second keyframe position, paste that same leg, then press G, press the middle mouse button to constrain it to the horizontal axis, leaving it here. 
Deselect all points, then use the C key to select just these points. Place the middle mouse cursor here, then rotate the entire leg so that the toe is bent. Select all points in the leg, and then press the G key to move it here. Select just these points, then rotate the foot like this. Select the points from the knee upward, then rotate the leg like this. From the Sculpt menu, select the Smooth tool, then smooth the ankle and the toe. Select the entire leg, and then grab and move it to this position. Place the 3D cursor here, then rotate the leg. Send this leg all the way to the back. Use the Push tool from a great distance and shape the leg like this. Scroll through the frames to check your work often. Select one point on the leg, press L to select Linked, copying it to the clipboard. On frame 10, paste it, then press G to grab and move it into place. Select again just the leg and move it all the way to the back. Place the right mouse cursor near the top of the leg and then rotate it a little more like this. Zoom in on the foot and then sculpt with the push tool. Advancing to the next keyframe, paste the same leg, then grab and move it into this position, then rotate it like this, using the G key to grab and move it into place. With the whole leg selected, move it all the way to the back. Hold down the Alt key and scroll your mouse to move through all the frames. Use the C key to select just these points, place the right mouse cursor here, and then rotate the whole foot. Use the C key to select the toe points, place the right mouse cursor here, and rotate the toe upward. Select these points from the knee down, place the right mouse cursor, and rotate the knee. Select the whole leg and rotate it here. Select the Smooth tool, and then smooth out these points. Then select the Push tool, and zoom in on the toes, sculpting them with the E key held down. Switch back and forth as needed using the Sculpt tools, and then the Smooth tool. Hold down the Alt key and use the scroll wheel to move through your animation keyframe by keyframe. Using only five keyframes, we've already established half of the walk cycle. Position the time slider between the first two keyframes, then use Ctrl E to establish an in-between frame. Use the Sculpt tool at a great distance to shape it like this, zooming the view as needed to do finer detailed work. Position the time slider at about frame 8, and let's create another in-between with Control e Use the Push tool to sculpt the foot and the leg from a distance. Check the flow and the continuity of your animation. Let's create another in-between between these two keyframes. Note that sometimes the foot doesn't maintain the volume that it should. Simply fix this irregularity with the Push tool. Check your animation by scrolling through the frames once again. This final foot slap is an important gesture, which really helps to establish the weight of the character. At this point, we'll establish a rather extreme toe position. Check your animation again to see the continuity. Hold down the Shift key and middle mouse button to drag and pan your view. Play back your animation to see it in real time. This whole stride is a bit slow. Let's adjust this by placing the time slider on frame 1 and then selecting all frames and scaling them toward the cursor. Frames placed close together always make a faster motion. This is a much better tempo. The other half of the walk cycle can be created by copying and pasting the existing frames and then reversing the stacking order, thus saving a lot of time. In the frame view, use the A key to deselect all frames and then the B key to select these frames. Press Shift D to duplicate them and place them here. Positioning the time slider on the first of these new frames, 
Select all and then grab them and drag them here using the middle mouse button to constrain to the horizontal. While advancing to each new keyframe, grab and move each one into this new position aligning with the onion skin. It's at this position here that we need to establish the stacking order of the legs and reverse them. The leg that's in the front needs to go to the back, and the leg that's in the back needs to come to the front. This process needs to be repeated for every keyframe. Once the stacking order of each keyframe is reversed, we have a complete walk cycle. To make sure you're only adjusting keyframes, use only the up and down arrow keys to advance and retreat. Adjust the length of the end slider so that all of your animation will play back. Then press play to see it in real time. Taking a closer look, we could add a little more toe bend at the beginning of the walk. Use the C key to select just the ankle and below portion. Position the right mouse cursor here and then rotate like this. Now select only the toes and rotate them like this. Select the smooth tool and then smooth out the ankle and toe areas. When you need to sculpt an area of the drawing that's behind another, select just that area and then enable Selection Mask. Now when you use any of the sculpting tools, it will only affect the area selected. Here we have an unnecessary keyframe. Eliminate that by dragging it onto an existing keyframe. As the whole weight of the character falls on this foot, let's make it squash a bit so that the weight is evident. Make sure to first deselect Selection Mask. To correct the shape of this foot, which is now in front, we need to use the selection mask again. Using L to select just the leg, enable the selection mask and then sculpt the toes like this. Here again we have an unnecessary keyframe. Simply drag one on top of the other to eliminate it. Let's adjust this trailing foot to give it more of a bend. Do the same thing to the frame behind. Sculpt this foot to give it the correct continuity. Now do the same thing with this foot. Enable the selection mask whenever one foot is in front or behind another. Let's now play back our animation to see the whole thing in real time. We need to extend the length of the foot squash.
We also need to add a couple of frames to have a foot squash on the last foot. We now have all the keyframes we need for a complete advancing walk cycle. We only need to duplicate these frames and then one by one moving each one into a proper position. As you advance one by one to each key position, it's a simple matter to select all, then use the grab tool to advance the drawing to the new position, making sure to align the drawing with the onion skin. While grabbing and moving any object in Blender, you can begin the move by pressing G, moving the mouse in an axis direction, and then pressing once on the middle mouse button to constrain to that axis. With our character, you'll see a horizontal line indicating it's being constrained to the horizontal axis. Using this function makes sure our character's feet are always on the ground. Let's play the entire animation back to see our progress. Whoops, we'll need to change the end slider to include all the frames. You can see that there's a jiggle at the very end of the animation. We'll need to fix this. Just use the A and G keys to correct the alignment. Let's play the whole thing back again. The flashing you see is because we have a couple of frames with all of the points highlighted. Find these frames and press A to deselect all points. Let's play back the whole animation once again.